Hey guys, how are you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review, so I hope you find this one interesting. This movie is a drama from Japan, Japanese language English subs, released in the year 2011, directed by Shian Sono, and this film is called Guilty of Romance. So Guilty of Romance starts off with a dead body. This woman has uh, been killed in a very brutal fashion. Some of her body parts are missing and they've been replaced by a mannequin. So it's a very strange murder, and it's a murder that the detective and leader of the investigation wants to get down to the bottom to. So in order to get to the bottom of the investigation, she has to go back into the past. And so the movie tells a story through flashbacks of this very lonely housewife. She's very sweet, but she has a very cold marriage with her very famous novelist husband. So one day she gets manipulated by this very mysterious woman on the street who convinces her to do some nude photo shots. And so she goes into nude modeling and then nude modeling goes into pornographic film and then eventually it leads to prostitution. And this is where she befriends another prostitute who leads it down a very dark alley of depravity that basically corrupts this woman's soul. So she wants desperately to seek romance, but in the end she's getting lust and she's getting treated very bad and it's basically corroding the person that she used to be and it all adds up to this very fateful day that you see at the start of the film so who this dead body is is something you're gonna have to find out for yourself because that's as far as i'm going with my synopsis now my thoughts on Guilty of Romance. This is actually part of a trilogy, but don't worry, if you haven't seen the other films, then you're not going to really find it difficult to follow these movies, because they are very standalone films. So you've got Love, Love Exposure that I haven't actually seen, Guilty of Romance, and Coldfish. Now, the, the similarities that each film have is that it's hatred against humanity, is that this is a director who's not afraid to stick his middle finger up to the PC crowd and show you the world that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that it's there. And that's the beauty of horror films. It's the beauty of these styles of movies, is that it's showing you ugly it's not showing you the uh, the fluffy sort of romantic crap that's out there and that it's happily ever after but then all of a sudden sometimes you do get that side of humanity that does deal you a very harsh card and I think that Shian Sono in his Hatred trilogy I, I really like Coldfish and I think Coldfish had that similarity at showing you ugliness and it's magnifying ugliness to a point where it's bordering on a horror film and I think that's exactly the best way I could sum up Guilty of Romance so coming into the film I didn't know what to expect because Shian Sono is definitely a hit and miss director for me he's very iconic he's very very much up there with Takashi Miike as far as his films are concerned. He's really put Japan on the map. Uh, he's made films such as Himizu and uh, Suicide Club. I didn't really like those films, but I really liked Coldfish and also Why Don't You Play in Hell. So it's two films I really liked, two films I didn't really like, so I'm really in the middle as to whether or not I like this director. Now, I really appreciate him for what he does, but whether or not I, he's a great uh, the director for me, I don't quite know. So I was hoping that Guilty of Romance would really be a film that would push me in either direction direction as to whether or not I liked him or didn't like him, but in the end, after seeing Gu Guilty of Romance, I'm still in the middle. Now, this is not a bad film by any means, but it's still a film that had the problems that I had with uh, his other film, especially Himizu. Now, Himizu had problems that was ve very repetitive, a little bit too long, and so they were problems that were very reminiscent in this film. Although it doesn't derail it like it derailed Himizu, it still it was present. And so it's not a film I loved, but then again, it's a film I appreciated because it is a very haunting experience. And and what I liked most about this film is that it, it deconstructs characters very, very well. At the start of this film, you've got this lonely housewife. She's very sweet, very, very, very innocent. And she's living the life that a lot of other romance films will make you believe that that's the life in store for you. And so she's married a very rich husband, very well-known husband. She's got everything at her feet. She's got a lovely house and she appears to be just living the life but unfortunately underneath all of the, the the spectacular surroundings that she has underneath she's a very lonely and haunted person and so she wants that connection but her husband's not giving that connection it's a very cold relationship that these two characters have and so after a while I started to sense that she's missing something and what she's missing is romance she's missing the stuff that you see in romantic comedies she's missing the stuff that will tell you that everything's going to be all right that it's going to be sugar-coated that you're going to have children you're going to live happily ever after and that's the aspect of the film that I thought was very intriguing is that this character was expecting that but unfortunately she wasn't getting that and so in order to try and get that fluffy romance she's going down into a very depraved world is because her innocence is being manipulated by very corruptive people and so when she goes into the prostitution she's led into this nude photo shoot by this mysterious woman and this mysterious woman this is her world and so when two worlds clash unfortunately the corruptive world is going to take over and this is exactly what happens to this character and she goes into the world of lust 
lust, and lust is very depraved, and some very depraved things that happen to this character that really just tear away the person that she used to be, and that's what makes it very haunting, and that's what makes it very sad, is because this character is gone into enough to actually give you the, the, the platform into a seemingly perfect life, but basically objects and materials aren't really going to give you that happiness, but when you're treated as an object yourself, that's basically how I felt this film was at the start of the movie, it was all about objects giving you happiness, but in this in, in this area, when it comes in this area, when it comes into the sexuality of the film, being treated as an object is a really bad thing. And so there's some very graphic rape scenes in the film, there's some very graphic nudity and sex scenes. So if you're not uh, familiar with the more provocative type of cinema, you're not going to like this film. But I think the best part, as I said, is the deconstruction of characters in this movie and the deconstruction of decency to a point where I felt as though all these characters were numb. They were numb to the horrors of reality. And as I said, this is a reality that a lot of people want to turn the other cheek to is that this is the reason why horror films aren't liked is because it does show you that okay well maybe things aren't going to go so well and it does give you that doubt as far as a person is concerned and that's what Shian Sono delivers very well in Guilty of Romance this is all complemented very well by some very good visuals uh, some very seedy sort of atmosphere that the film creates very neon light and so bright colouring but it feels as though you're in a very seedy underworld of Japan and that no one is beautiful in this film is that yes you've got the beauty of the innocence but as this character starts to go further and further into depravity that the innocence is being is becoming less and less and so this character herself is becoming ugly which in turn creates that sense of despair the whole film just has a level of cruelty to it that i thought really nails you down and makes you feel very depressed having said that there are some very dark elements of humor especially one where this main character's friend, they go to her mother's house, and the mother is belittling her to no end. And I thought it was so harsh that it was actually quite funny. And so I think that summed up the whole film, is that it's so cruel that you can't help but feel sympathy for them, but Shian Sono does throw in a few darkly humorous elements to help alleviate the mood a little bit, but never goes into uh, basic caricature. It never goes into a straight-out comedy. It has that sort of humorous element to allow you to have a little bit of a breather, and definitely a breather is what you need. So there are some fairly haunting uh, scenes with the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack is very pivotal in this film. It does help contribute to the emotion. But I also have a problem with the soundtrack as well. And so it, the runtime, the continuity is a little bit disjointed, but it doesn't go for too long. It's under two hours. And that's something you don't get very often from a Shian Sono experience. So that's something I liked and I appreciate. And then the ending of the film, I thought was fairly hard hitting. And it, as I said, it just makes you realize that there is a big difference between lust and uh, romance. Romance is all about becoming you know, connected to the person who you are, but lust is all about being treated as an object. And that objectivity of women in this film is very cruel and, as I said, very hard-hitting. So it's very provocative, sticks the middle finger up at the PC crowd. So if that's something for you, then this is a movie that I think will appeal to you. But unfortunately, it does have problems and it's not a masterpiece. It's not the film I was hoping it would be for the simple fact that it does have problems that his other film, Hemizu, had. <clears throat> now, I actually got copped a lot of flack for my review of Hemizu because uh, a lot of people say I misunderstood that film. But the reason why I didn't like Kamizu is that it was too long and it was overkill with the theatrics, the melodrama. And I thought there was a lot of melodrama in Guilty of Pleasure, but fortunately it doesn't derail it like it did to Amizu. So you've got a lot of soundtrack that's dictating how you should feel. And sometimes that works, but after a while it starts to become very repetitive. And you feel, okay, we get the point. Xian, you don't have to use the music over and over. And so after a while, I, st I started to think, okay, let's just turn off the music for a while. It did become very distracting. You've also got uh, some parts of the film that really drag. And so I didn't like that. I thought, although it's under two hours, it still felt a little bit too long. And you've also got the unnecessary element of the procedural aspect of the film, is that this detective is there, but I never thought that the detective had a very... Uh, it, it didn't have a, a meaning to be there. It's because it's forgotten about after a while. I, I forgot that this was a detective doing an investigation because it's really going into the story and that's good because the story is the main focus of how this dead body came about but I thought the side element of this detective was un not necessary because at the end of the film it's not a, mi a murder mystery sort of who done it. it's just basically the life of innocence being corrupted and then at the end it ties up the loose ends as far as the investigation is concerned and I thought that was very convenient and it was just a plot device that I didn't think was really needed so that was the problems I had with the film but pushing all that aside it's still definitely a film I would recommend. It does have some very intriguing moments and as a result of that I'm going to give uh, Guilty of Romance three and a half stars. Alright guys, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies and I'll see you later.